Hi students, welcome to ePathshala. I am Dr. Sangamitra, Assistant Professor. Today we are going to discuss about ultraviolet and ozone treatment in food processing. As you all know, microbiological contamination of foods is a major concern in food processing industries. Microbial safety of foods indicates the removal or inactivation of pathogenic microorganisms associated with foods. The most widely followed method to achieve safe food is by use of chemical additives and thermal treatment of foods. Health conscious consumers prefer food products that are minimally processed or without chemical additives. The application of thermal treatment or followed to extend the shelf life and also to ensure the safety of food products. But these thermal treatments are known to produce some negative effects on nutritional and sensorial qualities of foods. The undesirable changes due to high processing temperatures or degradation or reduction of thermolabile nutrients such as vitamin C or degradation of colors. The challenge arises for any food processing industries are the production of environment friendly sustainable and chemical free foods. Also, the production of safe food product without compromising the nutritional and sensorial quality of food seems to be an important task for the manufacturers. There needs to be a solution in terms of alternative non-thermal processing of foods. Ultraviolet light and ozone treatment are such non-thermal food processing methods that can produce safe food products while maintaining nutritional characteristics and minimizing the loss of quality in terms of flavor and color. On completion of this module, you will be able to identify the principle behind ultraviolet treatment in food processing and its applications. Also, you will be able to understand the basics of ozone and its effect on quality of foods. First, we'll see about ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum with a wavelength ranges from about 10 to 400 nanometer, placing it between the X-rays and visible part of the spectrum. The wavelength can be further subdivided into UVA, UVB, UVC and Wacom UV. UVA ranges from 315 to 400 nanometer which is responsible for tanning in human skin. UVB ranges from 280 to 315 nanometer which is the cause for skin burning and can lead to skin cancer. The wavelength of UVC is about 200 to 280 nanometer and this UVC inactivates bacteria and viruses due to germicidal action. Wacom UV is about 100 to 200 nanometer which is transmitted only in Wacom and absorbed by almost all the substances. UVC provides germicidal functions at 234 nanometer which offers quick and effective inactivation of microorganisms. When microorganisms are exposed to the germicidal wavelength of UV light, they are rendered incapable of reproducing and infecting. It has been reported that UV light are effective against bacterial, viral and parasitic diseases and also against pathogenic organisms, cholera, polio, typhoid and hepatitis. UV light can also destroy contaminants such as pesticides, industrial solvents and pharmaceuticals through UV oxidation. It is possible either alone or in conjunction with hydrogen peroxide. Regarding the mechanism of microbial inactivation, UV light is mostly employed as disinfectant treatment to reduce the microbial load in foods. UVC is germicidal in action because most of the microorganisms absorb UV light at a wavelength of 254 nanometer. This short wavelength is responsible for physical shifting of electrons and breaking of bonds in the deoxyribonucleic acid 
which makes them unable to perform vital functions thus preventing life and reproduction. The mechanism of microbial inactivation and cell death is due to absorption of UV by DNA and RNA. The high absorption of UVC by DNA is associated with purine and pyrimidine bases and its ability to absorb light at this wavelength. Short UV light damages the DNA of exposed cells by causing bonds to form between adjacent thiamines in DNA chains. UVC at a dosage of 1000 joule per meter square or more possess the germicidal properties and cause bacteria, yeast, viruses to undergo four log reductions. The effect of UV light on organisms varies from species to species. In same species also, the effect is influenced by the type of strain, stage of culture, type of growth medium and density of microorganisms. Thus, ultraviolet is a mechanism capable of disinfection for fluid streams such as water, air and liquid foods with low absorptivity in the UVC wavelength range. Now, we will move on to the applications of UV light. Applications include decontamination of surfaces of equipment in bakeries, cheese and meat plants, in addition to usual cleaning and sanitizing practices and for decontamination of surfaces of conveyors and packaging containers such as boxes, caps, bottles, cartons, tubes, films and foils. Other common applications include air and surface sterilization, especially in food packages, brewers, bottling and cosmetics. Due to very low penetration depth of UV, it is best suited for surface treatments only. Regarding the effect of UV on liquid food products, ultraviolet radiation is widely applied to disinfect water as an alternative to chlorine which may deliver toxic byproducts such as trihalomethanes and may be harmful for aquatic ecosystem. Depending upon the optical properties of the food, UV light penetrates only up to a several millimeters from any surfaces. But UV light can easily penetrate water since it is transparent to the wavelength produced. UVC rays will destroy a minimum of 99.99% of harmful microorganisms including E. coli, cryptosporoidium and giardia. The organisms are unable to develop any immune mechanism against UV light. The degree of inactivation of pathogens is directly proportional to the dose of UV applied to the water. The US Food and Drug Administration and US Department of Agriculture have reported that the use of UV irradiation is safe. FDA approved the use of UV light as an alternative to thermal pasteurization of fresh juice products. The performance criteria defined by FDA for fruit and vegetable juice processing is at least 5 log reduction in the number of target pathogen of concern. When apple cider was exposed to UV wavelength of 254 nanometer and intensity of 14.3 millijoule per centimeter square of UV radiation for an exposure time between 1.2 and 1.9 second exhibited a 5 log reduction of cryptosporidium and E. coli. It was also found from studies that UV pasteurized apple cedar possess superior color and sensory characteristics compared to thermally pasteurized apple cedar. UV irradiated samples does not show any significant decrease in consumer acceptability. Increased flow rate of apple juice during UV radiation increases the inactivation of E. coli. This was observed when turbulent flow UV reactors are used because of better mixing conditions inside the UV reactor. It was also examined that the absorbance consistently affected the inactivation of E. coli in the apple juice. UV light cannot penetrate milk and other turbid foods like it does in water. 
So, such food products need to be fed as a thin layer into the system. Inactivation of E. coli W1485 and Bacillus cereus endospores in raw cow milk, commercially processed skim milk and soy milk using UV irradiation has been studied. Greater than 7 log reduction of E. coli W1485 in skim milk and greater than 5 log reduction of E. coli W1485 for soy milk with a UV dose of 0.05 joule per ml were observed. In case of raw cow milk, a 4 log reduction of E. coli W1485 was noted. A higher UV dosage was suggested for raw cow milk than the skim milk and soy milk due to lower UV transmission of raw cow milk. Thus, UV light treatment showed a considerable reduction in microbial contamination in liquid food systems. Next, we will see about the effect of ultraviolet light on solid food products. For the reduction of pathogens from fresh produce, the commonly used chemical treatment techniques include usage of chlorine, bromine, iodine, trisodium phosphate, hydrogen peroxide. Application of UV seems to be a better alternative because it does not leave any residual product in the treated products. Even a low level of UVC radiation of peaches and tomatoes reduces the post harvest rots, delayed the ripening and improved the shelf life of the product. UV treatment may be given as a continuous mode or in a pulsed mode. The UV light is released in a continuous manner whereas in pulsed UV, the energy is stored for a short period of time in a capacitor then released as short pulses as several nanoseconds. The application of pulsed UV treatment after 60 seconds showed a maximum reduction of 4.3 and 2.9 log colony forming units per gram for Salmonella and E. coli respectively in blueberries. Exposure of packaged watermelon cubes to UV light at 4.1 kJ per meter square showed 1 log reduction in microbial population without changing its overall quality. UV disinfection studies have been carried out in fruits such as oranges, lemons, peaches, pears, grapes, etc. UV radiation has also been used on the surface of meats to reduce the count of E. coli and salmonella in pork skin and muscles. Listeria monocytogens on chicken meat and Salmonella typhomurium on poultry carcasses. UV irradiation treatment has the potential to control Listeria monocytogens and other microbes of concern in meat and poultry processing facilities. Also used on the surface of shell egg to reduce the total aerobic plate count of Salmonella typhomurium, E. coli and Ersina entrocolitica. Regarding the limitations and regulatory issues of UV usage, the presence of any suspended solids in water or other liquid foods blocks the penetration of UV light, thereby reducing the germicidal effect. Exposure to UVB is more intense than UVA. Exposure to UVB can penetrate deeper into the skin layers affecting the connective tissues and blood vessels which results in premature aging. Few medicines or chemicals act as a photosensitizing agents when exposed to UV and enhances the effect of UV radiation from sunlight or other sources. Such effects can occur in people or exposed to UV radiations at work. A repeated exposures to UV include skin aging and skin cancer. There is a strong relation between skin cancer and prolonged exposure to solar UV and from artificial sources. Next, we will move on to an another topic called ozone treatment. Ozone, chemically it is O3, is a naturally occurring gas which represents the fresh, clean smell in air following the thunderstorm. The word ozone is derived from the Greek word ozine means to smell. 
Ozone contains three oxygen atoms in the form of isoscales triangle with an angle of 116.8 degree between two oxygen and oxygen bonds. Ozone is an antimicrobial agent which has enormous potential applications in the food industry due to its advantages over conventional antimicrobial agents such as chlorine, potassium sorbate, etc. FDA has approved the usage of ozone as a direct additive to food and it is one of the strongest disinfectants currently available for contact with foods. Usually, ozone is generated on site due to its unstable nature whereby it quickly decomposes to normal oxygen. Ozone is an unstable bluish gas with a pungent odor which can also be produced artificially by electrical discharge, electrochemical or ultraviolet radiations. In the electrical discharge method, dry air or oxygen free from particulate matter is passed through the space between two high voltage electrodes separated by a dielectric material glass. The gas mixture discharged from the ozonator normally contains about 1 to 3 percent ozone when using dry air and 3 to 6 percent ozone when high purity oxygen is used as a feed gas. In electrochemical method, an electric current is applied between an anode and cathode in electrolytic solution containing water and a solution of highly electronegative anions. A mixture of ozone and oxygen is discharged at the anode. In UV radiation method, when oxygen is exposed to UV light of 140 to 190 mm wavelength, which splits the oxygen molecules into oxygen atoms, then the oxygen atoms further combine with other oxygen molecules to form ozone. Let us see how Ozone inactivates the microorganisms. Ozone is one of the most potent sanitizers which are active against all forms of microorganisms even at very low concentrations. Ozone attacks microbial cellular constituents such as proteins, unsaturated lipids and respiratory enzymes in cell membranes, peptidoglycans in cell envelope, enzymes and nucleic acids in the cytoplasm, proteins and peptidoglycan in the spore coats during microbial inactivation mechanism. On decomposition of ozone, it forms hydroxyl, hydroperoxy and superoxide radicals. The oxidizing power of these free radicals is responsible for microbial inactivation. This inactivation of microorganism happens by disruption of the cell envelope or disintegration of the cell. Both molecular ozone and the free radicals formed during decomposition of ozone play a crucial role in this inactivation mechanism. The cell membrane with the proteins and unsaturated lipids is the first and foremost site of attack by ozone. The double bonds of unsaturated lipids and sulfohydryl groups of enzymes get oxidized by ozone. It leads to alteration in the permeability of cell membrane leading to leakage of cell content, cell disintegration and eventually causes cell death. Each microorganism has an inherent sensitivity to ozone in which bacteria are more sensitive than yeast and fungi and spores are more resistant than vegetative cells. Ozone efficacy has also been investigated in different food products such as milk, gelatin, albumin, casein, whipping cream, locust bean gum, soluble starch and sodium caseinate. Regarding the effect of ozone on liquid foods, ozone is the strong disinfectant and oxidizer used for water treatments compared to other water disinfecting agents. Ozone is more than 50% stronger oxidizer and acts over 3000 times faster than chlorine. As per US FDA's requirement, it is mandatory to achieve a 5 log reduction of the most resistant pathogens such as E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria monocytogens in fruit juices. Due to the high oxidation potential of ozone, it results in the degradation of organic components. 
a significant color loss due to the pigment degradation was observed in strawberry blueberry and orange juice this was due to the oxidative cleavage of the chromophores due to attack on conjugated double bonds the color in orange juice is due to the presence of carotenoid pigment which contains one or more aromatic rings the ozone and hydroxyl radicals generated in the aqueous solution may open these aromatic rings and leads to partial oxidation of the product such as organic acid aldehydes and ketones patulin is a carcinogenic mycotoxin present in apple juice it is seen that this mycotoxin survives conventional thermal treatment whereas ozone treatment of apple juice showed a significant destruction of this mycotoxin next we'll move on to the effect of ozone on solid foods cut fruits and vegetables are prone to contamination due to handling processing and presence of natural contaminants in the products the most commonly used decontamination procedure is by chlorine based washing of the products but it produces the risk of formation of undesirable by products such as trihalomethanes and chloramines on reaction with organic matter formation of toxic chlorine byproducts such as trihalomethanes and chloramines hence for the washing of fruits vegetables and minimally processed product ozone is utilized due to its strong antimicrobial agent it has been observed that ozone washing of red peppers and strawberries significantly reduce the microbial load compared to simple water washing It was also reported to improve the quality and storage life of cold stored broccoli, cucumber and blackberries. Exposure of products to ozone does not impart any undesirable quality related attributes to the product. Ozone concentration of 0.3 microliter per liter in table grapes degrades the presence of fungicides on the surface of grapes. Similarly, ozone is used for degradation of herbicides pesticides and mycotoxins the effectiveness of the ozone treatment depends on factors such as organic matter or composition of food ozone concentration treatment time and temperature any improper concentration of ozone will affect the sensorial characteristics of the processed product in a similar way to its use in fruits and vegetables Ozone can also be used as a surface disinfectant for meat and poultry products. Ozone washing of poultry meat in combination with refrigerated storage decreased the microbial counts and extended the shelf life of poultry by 2.4 days. Higher ozone concentration of about 10000 ppm reduced the population of inoculated salmonella in beef and poultry by 99%. Ozone spray concentration of 1.5 mg per liter reduced the initial counts of aerobic bacterial populations and inoculated listeria innocua counts in salmon fillets without any significant increase in lipid peroxidation levels when held at a refrigerated storage of 4 degree. It has been suggested that ozone when used in combination with modified atmospheric packaging extends the shelf life of stripped red mullet and also maintains both microbiological safety and quality exposure of dried foods such as cereals peas beans and spices to ozone reduced bacillus species and micrococcus count up to 3 log unit based on the ozone concentration temperature and relative humidity the use of ozone also poses some limitations due to its oxidizing power Ozone may affect the sensory attributes such as color, formation of undesirable odors on some treated products. Apart from that, nutritional component of food such as vitamins, amino acids, enzymes, essential fatty acids may get altered as a result of oxidation by ozone. Such adverse effects of ozone depends on the food composition, applied ozone dosage and treatment conditions. Ozone when treated with water containing bromine may lead to the formation of undesired disinfection byproducts such as bromate. 
toxicity of ozone depends on the concentration and exposure time it is considered as a hazardous gas the characteristics order of ozone is deductible even at a concentration as low as 0.02 ppm let me summarize the points so far discussed ultraviolet light is an electromagnetic spectrum with a wavelength ranges about 10 to 400 nanometer UVC provides the germicidal function at 234 nanometer. UV treatment is used as a decontamination treatment of surfaces of equipments in bakeries, cheese and meat plants. Due to very low penetration depth of UV, it is best suited for surface treatments only. Ozone is a naturally occurring substance with three oxygen atoms. Ozone is unstable gas with a pungent odor which can also be produced artificially by electrical discharge electrochemical or ultraviolet radiations Ozone is 3000 times faster than the conventional disinfectant chlorine